Earlier this year, I knew I wanted to upgrade my road bike a bit as one way of hopefully improving in triathlon in 2023. Well, one of my planned upgrades has now arrived. So in this video, I'll show you what that upgrade is and why I decided to go with that over alternative options. So I had briefly tried a pair of prime clip-on bars probably around a year ago, but I really didn't get on with them. Basically, they were far too small for me and had next to no adjustment. At the time, I just accepted that they weren't for me and chucked them away in the cupboard, thinking there may come a time when they come in useful for something. They were pretty cheap, around £25 I think, so it's not like I lost a lot and I wasn't really that fussed about it. Funnily enough, the pads themselves have actually come in useful recently as I spend more time cycling indoors. I use them as a way of having two extra positions on the bike, with one having my forearms down in the usual TT position and the other just placing my hands on top of the pads themselves to raise me up just a little bit. I mentioned these in a recent video where I shared seven tips on how to stay comfortable cycling indoors. So I'll leave a link to that one in the description box down below for you to check out once you've finished watching this video. Now, fast forward several months to when I started looking at some potential upgrades to the bike. I knew that some clip-on bars would be a worthwhile upgrade, especially for the price. And so set out to find some that actually fit me rather than just go with what's cheapest at the time. Like with anything bike related, I consulted my mate and bike fitter Mark and asked him to help me find a pair of bars that would be suitable. We ultimately settled on the profile design Sonic Ergo 50 bars as they looked to be a good size from the pictures we saw and they had a really good amount of adjustment. Something we did consider is that I may not fit them straight out of the box and might need to buy a riser kit to raise them up a bit but we're taking this one step at a time and I'll try out the bars as they are first and then decide whether the riser kit itself is needed. Now I am only going to use these bars indoors over winter. I have a dedicated winter bike for commuting or if I do decide to go out for a ride. So the 3T Strada Due stays firmly indoors on the Wahoo Kicker for now. This is intentional as it will allow me to get some practice in and get used to the more aggressive position without any of the risks that come with being outside like a slippery road surface or even traffic. I do appreciate that there will come a time when I need to practice in this TT position outside, but now is not that time of year for that, so I'll head back out on the 3T in the spring, when hopefully I'll be a bit more used to being in that position and also have a bit more confidence going from the extensions to the brakes and things like that. I'm fortunate enough to have a SRAM Force electronic group set, so I will be looking at getting some blips for the end of the extensions at some point, which will allow me to change gear without having to come out of position. A bit like with the riser kit, I'm holding off on this for now and taking just one step at a time with the upgrades. The length of the wire for the blip may or may not be an issue or even availability for that matter, but Mark and I will again cross that bridge when we come to it. Now, you may be wondering why I just don't go out and get a dedicated TT bike itself instead of trying to convert the road bike. Well, there are two main reasons for this and they are price, and confidence. Now confidence is actually the main reason for me holding off on getting a TT bike, at least for the time being. You may have seen in an older video that I borrowed one of Mark's TT bikes to try out and although I didn't come off or anything like that, I was limited to only using it around the industrial estate on a Sunday evening when there weren't any cars around. I simply didn't have the confidence to ride the bike out on the public roads. It was a much twitchier bike than I'm used to and it may sound silly, but not being able to change gear on the base bar and having to reach out to the end of the extensions really threw me and put me off from using the bike. Now, I know in a race you don't have to worry as much about traffic, but I couldn't just go into a race blind on the bike that I have very little, if any, experience with. This led me to having to make a decision on whether I stick with using my road bike and look to upgrade it or splash out a good amount of cash to get a higher end TT bike most likely with an electronic group set. Mark and I had a good chat about it and we ultimately decided that buying a TT bike wasn't worth it for me at this stage. I'm still new to triathlon and after some serious thinking, I decided I can't justify spending that amount of money at this stage in my career, especially on something that I may end up not even using because of my confidence on it. To be honest, I'm not even super confident on my road bike. So to suddenly move to a bike that handles quite differently wasn't a risk that I was prepared to take. Unlike with the prime clip-on bars, I would have been absolutely gutted 
if I forked out that much money on something that I don't actually end up using because of a lack of confidence. Now I'm not ruling out a TT bike completely, but at this stage I've decided to stick with using my road bike for triathlons of all distances. So instead of getting a new bike, I can instead spend a fraction of that price and invest in a few different upgrades for the existing bike that will hopefully still make me faster in 2023 along with an overall improvement in fitness. It just felt right as a happy medium between sticking with the stock bike that I've used for the last two years and getting a TT bike. So I am ultimately happy with the decision that I've made. The clip-on bars are the first of several upgrades I've planned. So I'll be sure to share the others with you here on the channel when I get around to getting them. If you enjoyed this video, you might wanna check out this one on screen here, which I cover some of my 2023 race plans where I'll get an opportunity to see whether these upgrades have actually made me faster. Please drop the video a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you in the next one.